According to climate change skeptic Donna Laframboise, we hear a great deal about evidence-based public policy and are assured that climate policies are all about scientific evidence. But, she says, the scientific world is currently in crisis. Headlines declaring that science is broken have become commonplace. The editor of a prominent journal says that science has taken a turn towards darkness. Much of the scientific literature, he says, perhaps half, may simply be untrue. When a commercial laboratory attempted to verify the findings of 53 landmark cancer studies, it was unable to do so in 47 instances. That's a failure rate of 89%. Historically, says Laframboise, research findings have been considered credible if they were published in a peer-reviewed academic journal. But that threshold is too low. The peer review process works like this. A researcher sends an unpublished paper to a journal. The journal invites a couple of other people to evaluate it. Then they recommend that the paper be published, modified or rejected. But anyone can set up a journal and define peer review however they wish. No one enforces minimum standards or ensures that a journal's peer review policies are actually followed. And even at the most prestigious journals, a reviewer's written feedback may consist of a single paragraph. In other words, she says, peer review is little more than a sniff test. It is a tool used by the academic publishing industry. It helps journals select which papers, amongst the thousands sent to them, to publish. The peer review process doesn't ensure that lab equipment was clean before an experiment was conducted, or that the experiment was used properly. It doesn't examine raw data for accuracy, or computer software for errors. It provides no guarantee that proper statistical analyses were employed. It may even fail to double-check basic arithmetic. In general, we look for new law by the following process. First, we guess it. Then we compute the consequences of the guess. And then we compare those computation results to nature. Or we say compare to experiment or experience. Compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. Peer review, she maintains, was never intended to guarantee scientific accuracy and is wholly incapable of doing so. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. Laws about climate or any other matter should not rest on a conclusion that hasn't been independently verified. Peer review simply doesn't do this, she says. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is. It doesn't make a difference how smart you are, who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. If half of the published scientific research may simply be untrue, half of climate science may also be untrue. So when I say if it disagrees with the experiment, it's wrong, I mean after the experiment has been checked, the calculations have been checked, and the thing has been rubbed back and forth a few times to make sure that the consequences are logical consequences from the, from the guess, and that in fact it disagrees with a very carefully checked experiment. Until climate conclusions have been double-checked, until they've met a standard far more rigorous than mere peer review, Laframboise says we can't claim that our climate policies are evidence-based.